It was a chain reaction crash in Virginia, stranding hundreds of drivers along I-95. Many have been trapped overnight without food or water. Our next guest is a truck driver who was stuck in the middle of it. Joining us now on the phone is Emily Clemenson. Emily, thank you for being with us. I know it's been a trying time, but you certainly are um, trying to help others while you are there. You are on I-95 for five hours. Now you're, you are on US-1. You say that is also snarled. What, what are you seeing at as we you know, have the sun come up and start to warm up people who've been in their cars all night. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel for them because at least I have food and water. Um, <clears throat> I, and I, and I, luckily I've only been in it a short time compared to others. Um, even here on the U S one, it's no different than the I 95. We are dead stop traffic. We've been sitting here for two hours already. Mm. You know, Emily, I'm, I'm just wondering, because we are seeing the pictures right now on the screen. The big focus is on I-95 because that's where the big long traffic lines are and where all the tractor trailers got into those accidents. We know yep. what the problem is on I-95. What's the problem where you are? Why are you stuck? Have there been accidents? Is it just the weather? What's the cause? Well, as far as accident or weather, it looks pretty good. Um, I think this is pretty much just everybody else trying to get off of the I-95 mm. and taking this U.S. 1 route, uh, trying to find another way to get around it. Emily, you mm. noticed on social media that people were asking, or well, n n noting that they were running out of food and water, and you um, put on Twitter that a lot of truckers often have extra supplies. Did anyone take you up on that? No, I wish they would have. We actually made uh, a couple of peanut butter jelly sandwiches, and we had our bottles of water ready. Mm. Um, you know, but I just didn't feel comfortable knocking on anybody's door. Sure. I didn't want them to, you know, think, what is this weirdo doing? But I, the big thing is I want to bring awareness to say, hey, this is not the first. This is not going to be the last time that you're going to get stuck in something like this. I've been in this situation several times. Don't mm. be shy. A lot of us cook on the truck. We always have something in our fridge. We always have some kind of snack. We always carry extra water because we are in situations like this. Yeah, and it's great advice, Emily, for, especially for those who are close to some of these big rigs and trucks. Uh, but for a lot of people who are back in traffic, they are not near those. And I'm wondering if you've seen in your five hours on I-95 and your time now in US-1, have you seen authorities trying to help people to get through this, or are they pretty much hamstring with the rest of the people? Pretty much hamstring with the rest of the people. Yeah, we have, we have heard nothing, no CB chatter. Mm. Um, I would think that that's what they would do. I have, uh, our, uh, the emergency call is channel nine. Um, nothing was on there. Um, wow. Yeah, so no news. And, and I would not have even been in that situation if Google Maps didn't kick me off of traffic. Mm -hmm. But I did see people get out and stretch. I saw one gentleman uh, borrow the phone charger from the car next to him. It's just it's so unfortunate, and I feel bad for these folks that have been out here, you know, overnight, and they've got small kids. And So just remember, we're there. We're there to help. Just knock on our yeah. door. So if you're listening, you got to walk down a little bit. If you're listening on Fox News Radio and you're, you do need help, um, Emily is saying that the truck drivers are often able to do that. My last yes. question for you, Emily, is uh, I, I saw um, somebody got out of their car and was walking their dog there on the side of the road. Because you can imagine that there are pets in there. But you mentioned there might be small. It's very likely that there are small children in the cars uh, as there well. Was, there, there was two small kids next to us. Mm -hmm. There was two. Uh, because they call it the hammer lane, the number one lane. They were in that. And believe me, if, if, if I would have not been able to get off, if we sat there any longer, I probably would have been offering them something just mm -hmm. because they, I saw the kids in the back. Um, but, oh, yeah, they, a lot of that was all over Twitter, just saying, you know, we've got kids, we're, we're thirsty, we're hungry. Um, so if you're still stuck out there, you got a truck next to you, you got a truck two doors down, you're thirsty, you're hungry, even if it's a piece of cheese. I, I'm mm. I, nine times out of ten, I'm pretty sure they'll give you something. Mm. 
All right. Emily, will you stay in touch with us? Thank you so much. Stay safe and appreciate Thanks. you uh, showing such good community yeah. leadership by offering to help. Thank you so much. Uh, Best of luck to you, so Emily. Thank you. Me.